What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as D365Geek, and today we are talking about Power Automate and OneDrive for Business, and we're going to look at the trigger which is for a selected file. So this allows you to select a file and run a flow on demand. So you could select any number of files, um, go, to the, go to a location in OneDrive, hit the Power Automate button, and you can then do some automation on that. And we'll take a look at that today. So the first thing to kind of know, um, and there are there are two kind of important things with this. Firstly, this is an instant flow. It's not a, it's not an automatic flow, so you do need to choose instant um, as your trigger or your type of flow when you're building it. Um, you can just choose the trigger and it'll change it to an instant flow, but it's always good practice to make sure you're choosing the right one. Secondly, when I've been doing some testing for this, I cannot get this to work in any other environment other than the personal productivity environment. Now, the reason, I can't really find a reason for it. I can't find any documentation about it. There's nothing on the doc site. However, whenever I've tried to use this in any other environment, in a solution, outside of a solution, in any environment, it does not show in OneDrive for Business. It will only show when we use the personal productivity um, environment, and therefore that's the one we need to use. So first, make sure that you are logged into the personal productivity environment up here, or your default environment is the other thing. That's what uh, Microsoft um, want you to use your default environment for, is personal productivity for building your flows and things like that. Um, else you have your own environments, like you can kind of see me use my own test environments because I can then keep them away from everyone else. Personal productivity is trying to use for everyone to be uh, building their flows and, and stuff like that and, and their power apps um, to try and make themselves more um, product, uh, productive. So in the personal productivity of the default environment, I can then click on the new button uh, in Power Automate and I'm going to choose instant from blank. Now, uh, I can give this a name, so I'll call this OneDrive for biz, uh, Business uh, Selected File Flow. And then right away, I can see that the trigger is down here. I can always skip this action and just, just search the normal way. But I can see the trigger that I want is right here for a selected file. So I click on that, and then click Create. Now, the first thing you'll notice about this trigger is that it's slightly different from other triggers. Other triggers, you usually have things like, um, you know, what are you triggering them on, the scope of them, where it is, etc. This one actually just asks you for inputs. So it's a lot like a manual trigger flow where you can add inputs into it. So I could click add an input here and I could say write um, uh, notes about file. And then I can capture that data later on. So if I do new step, and then if I type compose into here, uh, and if I wait for Power Automate to catch up, um, just close it, just try it in. There we go. A little bit quicker this time. Compose. I can always put that um, that previous that that note into here uh, if it wanted to catch up. It's not showing me there. Uh, no, it's about file. Okay, so it's actually included in that. I was looking for a, a manual step, which is wrong. But yeah, I can use that notes about file uh, from there, uh, and I can also use another one um, like uh, you know username, for instance. So what that does is that that will capture that information as I'm doing it. So it's a lot like a manual flow, and a manual triggered flow has a lot of great potential with, with all the inputs that I've previously covered. So you can do that same sort of thing here. So what we'll do is we'll save this and we'll test it out. So click on save. We can see it's saved up there. Now if I click on test, you'll see that this red message here says the flow cannot be triggered for testing and you can't use any previous data runs uh, at the moment either. That's because this is a flow where you have to go and select a record and then trigger it based on that. So we'll switch over to Power Automate, to OneDrive. So I'm in OneDrive for business here. I've got, I'm inside a folder, uh, my Power Automate testing folder, which I've been using a little bit at the moment. And I can select one of these files. And as you can see, there's a there's an Automate button at the top, um, top uh, ribbon up here, command bar ribbon. And as I click it, you can see there's two, uh, there's two flows here that I could run. But as we've just watched that, this third one just pops in. So basically what that's going to do is that's going to check to see whether there's another flow. 
it's trying to um, trying to give you the ability to do it there. So we have that button there now. Uh, there is also a power automate button at the bottom where you can um, you know create flows from here. You can see your flows. You can configure flows. So the configure flows uh, I think are about these top two. Um, the create flow allows you to create flow direct from here and see your flows. Uh, opens up your your flows page. So if we choose the OneDrive for Business one, the one that we just selected, we get the bar pop out from the right. Uh, it's going to ask me, which is the first time I'm running this, to make sure that uh, we're signed in and we have the correct permission. So we're going to click OK. Then we're going to get that input, the you know notes about the file. So this is a lot like when you run a manual flow. You get that bar pop out from the right, and it, it asks you questions when you're testing it. Um, it's trying to do the same thing. Uh, this is a note about the file. So do that, and we click Run Flow, click Done, uh, and that's it. So if we go back to our flow, and if we go back to our flow details page, we can see nine seconds ago it ran successfully. So we'll open up that run. So we can see that it was it was run. Uh, we can see some some uh, details of the schema here. Uh, and then we can open the compose action and we can see this is the, the note about the file and that is the username but it's it's an encoded username it doesn't really give you the, the actual user details that we we traditionally want but it's as easy as that so there are a couple of things to know it needs to be created in your default environment or your personal productivity environment um, that is key secondly this is an instant flow and you do have additional properties in terms of additional inputs that you can also request at the same time which is really helpful so what do you guys think? Is this something you knew? Did you get um, tripped up by the whole personal productivity slash default environment like I did when I was testing this? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. If you did like this video, if you'd like and share it with your friends, it'd be much appreciated. If you've not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll see you next time.